What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and today we're going to be doing another vacuuming video. Now, you might see this uh, exact setting that we are in as one that is familiar. I worded that really weird, but you get the point. Basically, in a nutshell, we're back at my dad's house. And I was in the middle of cleaning up my old room because I still have pretty much all my stuff here. And we can see the vacuum collection for those interesting interested in seeing it don't have the perfect amount of lighting here but we do have some perhaps i can grab hold on let me grab a phone with a flashlight on it just so you can see this real quick so it's not all blurry and gross looking is this gonna let me Okay, yeah, this is not going to look very great. It's going to look relatively low quality, but we can see the current collection. And the only other machines that are at this house, besides these, are in the laundry room. I have a Hoover T-Series, a Dirt Devil Platinum Force, a Hoover Steam Vac, Hoover Soft and Light, the original one that I got, and the... Eureka Power Plus. So, we can see over here, in case some of you guys probably haven't seen these machines in a while. I don't know why the video quality looks so bad. I'm recording with my Note 9. I don't know why it looks this grody. But, so uh, my apologies for that. We can see back there, we've got the two stars of the show and all the others, including another star of the show. And we can see that. A couple more back there. So yeah, I'm sure if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know you can tell just by looking what all these machines are. Just by looking at them. But yeah, so... And out of those vacuums that I mentioned that were on my... Uh, in my... Laundry room. Sorry. I grabbed the DC-07. Because... Well, mainly because I'm going to be vacuuming off this mattress, and if I'm going to be vacuuming off the mattress, I need a good quality turbo tool. And, well, that's exactly what I have, because I have this. So, although soon I will be getting one of those, I believe it's a Wesselwork turbo tool or a Sebo turbo tool, I forgot which company made them off the top of my head, but it's the... The turbo tool that originally came with these DC-07s, the, the gray model that uh, looks like a, I believe it looks like a Wessel work tool or maybe it was Sebo again. I forgot which company made it off the top of my head, but it's one that wasn't made by Dyson before Dyson started making their own turbo tools. But uh, again, I could have some, some of that information could be correct because I'm not all that familiar with how the turbo tools work. I just wanted to get one because it's neat. But yeah, so you can see I've got, you know, box full of trash. I will still be keeping the box itself though, but I'll obviously I'm going to throw away all the trash because soon I'll be selling the Power Force 1398. And since the Sanitaire is the same size as the 1398, I'll be using this box to ship it in. I'm assuming it should be able to fit in it just fine. But, um, and there is the Sanitaire, which I'll probably take with me to the house. I'm not quite sure yet, but, uh, so obviously I'm running out of space in the new house as well. So, uh, take that off, off the lovely cord, and this machine I haven't worked on yet. The only thing, I'm assuming the main reason why it was thrown out was because it was missing this piece. So I managed to find one of those, one of those side pieces. And I still got to clean off some of my desk, but you can see, if I plug this in right here. Oh, I forgot the Dyson, you have to plug it in upside down. The clip doesn't match up with the grounding prong, which makes no sense. But whatever. So, and this does need, this probably, I believe this needs a new clutch and it also needs a new lower hose, like a lot of these Dysons do, and a cleaning. But um, I believe, if I remember correctly, this did have suction. 
if I remember correctly. And the hose, I think, was good on this. So, why don't you remember that I can't really pull this hose off with one hand, can I? Oh, let me set this down real quick. Do, 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 do. Is that going to work? That's not going to work. There we go. So we'll set that aside. And does this thing have suction? Yep. Okay, this is actually, this is, while this tool does do a lot better of a job than the much larger version of this that a lot of these later 07s came with, like, this one is a later 07, so it wouldn't have came with this or that gray one, it would have came with the one that's the color of this, but it's a lot bigger and has the little plunger thingy on the side that you can press to turn off the brush, so... A little bit annoying to vacuum with that concerning the suction kind of yanks it back and it well it kind of hurts your back in the process I don't think there's any splits in that hose that I saw so I think the hose is still good on this this is the 07 I got this from some sort of a vacuum save video I forgot which episode was it was it 19 I think I don't know something like that obviously it's the uh vacuum save video where there's a yellow DC07 in the thumbnail. Oh, you can't you can't slide it back in. Also, again, you can't slide it back in like a phantom. You have to find the button and push it in. There we go. Okay. And even though this has the uh, the bad clutch and the bad lower hose, let's see how well this does on this rug without being cleaned out or nothing just as is all the dust and all of its glory which of course we have to turn this on and press it down again so it is on the floor and we'll try this now
Ugh, yeah, you can you could hear that clutch just starting and stopping and starting and stopping. Or I should say the belts in the clutch. More so than the clutch itself. So yeah, what a surprise. A 15-year-old vacuum needs a new belt. So uh, that's not exactly surprising. But I mean, to be honest, I mean, it's a Dyson. It's an early Dyson that is known to not perform all that well as far as deep cleaning or agitation or even properly adjusting to the carpet height. But despite it having a bad, a worn out lower hose, a bad clutch, a brush roll that's in poor condition with probably worn down bristles and a lot of hair on the brush, and probably cyclones that are filled with dirt, considering that, you know, the, then again, the suction is perfectly fine on this, but um, it's not perfect. It is a little bit less than I'd expect from a Dyson, but considering Dysons always have a bunch of suction to begin with, still a perfectly acceptable amount of suction. We can tell it does get stuff out of the carpet, and some of this dirt was already in here. So, obviously this is not all it got out of the rug. If it was, that would be extremely impressive, but it wasn't. Although, this rug hadn't been vacuumed in a very, very long time because of the amount of stuff that was sitting on the rug, preventing it from being vacuumed, and also the fact that I haven't been here. I've been, obviously, mostly in my new house. So, there hasn't been a lot of foot traffic on this rug, but that also means that any dust that's been, you know, blown through the air has obviously settled on this carpet and on the mattress as well. But, uh, I don't know. Maybe there's another machine I should use to see if it can't get up more stuff out of this carpet. Who knows? Okay, other part of this video where, real quick, I go over this, ew, squeak, this area with a vacuum that ironically hasn't been touched since I first brought out this rug, which is kind of funny. So whenever I first got this rug, I vacuumed it with the Powertrack Revolution. You can tell I haven't even emptied it since then because it still has the packing peanuts in there from that video, but filter clean. I don't want to pull apart the uh, upper tank and check that, but I'm sure that's good too. So I haven't done anything to this, and uh, we're going to see if this thing sounds like crap now, or if it it's squeaking a whole lot. Probably needs some, uh, needs some TLC. But, uh, yeah. So let's see how this, how this sounds, and if this sounds awful or not.
So unfortunately it appears that this machine sitting for a long time meant that either the bearings in the brush roll or perhaps in the motor have dried out a little bit. I don't know if you could hear, but it made a really funny noise whenever I first turned it on. And then it started to sound a bit normal, but um, now even when I first got this thing, this thing was a little bit loud because the motor bearings are a little bit worn. But it has gotten a little bit worse, but it's it's still passable. But um, it is to the point where it is fairly loud, much louder than a Bissell of this style with healthy bearings, which would be, if a little bit quieter, but at the very least uh, would sound and be perceived as being quieter due to it being a lower pitch, as these motors tend to be whenever they're healthy. But most of the ones you get nowadays are going to sound like this. And then the ones that are really abused and had a lot of dust go through the motor are going to sound like a lot of the clean views I've gotten. Not the newer style, but the older style. Although, to be fair, they are all susceptible to it. Oh, except for, like, the very newest versions. It's basically like a redesigned Power Force Helix. But all the other clean views from, like, the 9595 and the 1838 or whatever it's called, all the way back to the original 8990 and 8975 clean views... The ones that are basically just like this without the little side pieces on the Revolution Cup have a lot of bearing issues due to the poor filtration on these machines. And this one is no exception, but it does sound fine. Uh, my ears are ringing a little bit after using it just for that short period of time, so uh, probably not a machine to use whenever people are sleeping. It does sound a little bit louder than my Powertrack Plus, so, motor is a little bit less healthy, but I'm sure if I open this thing down to the motor, which I still have yet to do, it's in the exact condition it's been since I got it from Cameron, other than replacing the filter, since the filters had basically fallen apart. But, um, despite it having relatively little use, the motor has aged a little bit more just from sitting, even though it's been sitting in a relatively cool, dry environment... It seems like it's had some issues, very similar to the Fury, although not nearly as bad as the Fury, uh, the 10-amp Fury in particular, that one back there, which you probably can't even see. Yeah, I, again, this, I don't know why this is, looks so grainy on my end. I don't know if there's something wrong with my Note 9, or if it's just because there's only the one light bulb and it's like a yellowish color instead of a whitish color, but... Sorry if the video quality looks poor in this video, but I don't usually film here anymore, so I obviously haven't bothered to upgrade the lighting or anything. But yeah, so that's vacuuming my whole bedroom with the Dyson DC-07 all floors, as well as the Bissell Powertrack Revolution. So uh, for, for those asking if this machine is for sale, uh, it is not. I am keeping it. And yeah... So, and also, uh, side note, General One, the person who originally got one of these and made me want to get one, actually got rid of his. Although, funnily enough, this one sounds exactly like his sounded, so maybe it's the same one? I doubt it, but uh, that'd be kind of funny. But yeah, so that's the Bissell Powertrack Revolution vacuuming this rug. And we can see, again, there already was dirt in here, so I'm not really sure if it picked up much. But it clearly, I mean, say what you will about these older Bissell. Say that they're junk, say that they're crap, say that they're, you know, budget garbage that's, you know, completely devoid of any quality when compared to a German-made product. Whatever you want to say about these. And I will be the first to admit, despite being a fan of these, these are not perfect. These have their issues. And I am perfectly qualified to say that because the Bissell Clean View is the first machine I ever worked on when I was five years old. And that was, what, 17 years ago at this point? 16 years ago at this point. And yeah, uh, I fixed thousands of these. Literally thousands. Like other machines, yeah, I fixed maybe a few hundred of them. Almost a thousand of them, because again, I've fixed thousands of machines over the years. But these ones, I've definitely fixed a good thousand of them, at least. 
and I've seen every possible problem that can happen with these machines. I've seen, you know, the I've seen the the height adjustments fall apart. I've seen melted end caps on the brush roll. I've seen broken pedal releases, bad filters, shot motor bearings, torn up cords. Uh, any possible problem you could see with these, I've I've seen the clips on these break and be held in with duct tape. Again, if you're rough with these things, they're not going to play very nice, um, but you got to beat the crap out of these things for a very significant period of time before they break down in any significant fashion. But, uh, I mean, yeah, the these things are pretty resilient, and the fact that there's a lot of these still running definitely is a testament to that. There's not as many as there used to be. I do think there's probably more maybe F1-style feather lights and breezes that are probably running more so than these. Uh, well, maybe not. Maybe about the same amount. Again, it's hard to quantify that because it's hard to tell what machine people have when they don't tell you what machine they have because obviously most people aren't giving away their machine or anything like that. They just buy a vacuum and just use it. So sometimes that's pretty hard to quantify. But this machine... I mean, you gotta you gotta give it some credit. It's been fine. And another thing is that oh god, this is gonna be a mess. Uh, of course, there's a dryer sheet in there. Ugh. Say what you will about these. I first thought these these like weird little side cups were really stupid. They're actually kind of kind of cool like they actually do their job like there is a lot of fine dust that's been shot into these little side pieces and appeared to have stayed out of the filter i mean, guess we can pull this down yeah the dryer sheet in there so i guess we can flip the little switch on the back of this Come on, there we go, and pull this piece out, Ugh. Let's see all that in there. So let's see what this filter looks like. That's about what I would expect. It's not horrible, I mean, but it is pretty bad. But not out of the ordinary for these machines. All that stuff in there. This this sort of a uh, packing peanut type of material is very awful to clean up, and probably much better suited for a bagged machine. Ugh. Yeah, this is just not. This is not gonna not gonna get out of here. Um, I'm gonna have to clean this up with some sort of a probably a bag machine. Uh, which bag's the question? Uh, which one? I mean, we got a few to choose from. I mean, most of my collection unfortunately involves bagless crap, and I mean, it's just it's just realistically what you're gonna find in the wild so I don't know if I want to use that wind tunnel quite yet but we got the sanitaire and we got the power lifter which one let's go sanitaire let's grab this little sanitaire SL 4110A I know this thing's been a popularly that's not a word. <laughs> Popular request for machines to to demo and review. Since to this day, no real vacuum YouTuber that I'm aware of has done a proper review on this machine. It seems to be a relatively small lack of interest. Even the big green version of this has a all right number of reviews on the interwebs. On the internet, there's, a, there's a, a good amount of reviews on the internet. Anyways, 
HEPA bag. HEPA bag in here. Ready to go. If I drop, after I drop the vacuum. Ah, these are slippery. Maybe some of these other machines probably have older bags in them that I should probably use first. But, uh, yeah, it seems like leaving an old bag in a, an old HEPA bag in a vacuum isn't as bad as, isn't as bad as leaving dirt in a bagless machine. But who knows? Okay. Come on. There we go. Alright, okay, so we got that nice nice and cleaned out, at least, you know, to an acceptable degree. We don't have any any of the little foamy crap, I just forgot what it's called, the little styrofoam pellets that are actually stuck in a spot beyond the filter where we get sucked into the motor, so that's the most important part. And that's taken care of. So we can put that back in the vacuum. And I'll twist the knob. Twist that knob. And uh, what else is in here? There's some like. Harder things in here? I don't know what these... Oh, there's like some dirt, dirt clumps in the side, stuck in the side pieces. Maybe that's why people don't like them. Okay, now we got the Powertrack Revolution mostly cleaned out. So we can 
push that out of the way. And we've got some... Is this just paper? Or what, what are these crunchier pieces? I'm not quite sure. It looks like it's all just paper. It shouldn't be anything that should really harm it. Hmm. This is gross, I'm touching all this stuff. Especially because it's really old. Because it's been sitting in that machine for however long. And of course now there's dust on that hose, which we just gotta wipe off. Obviously if I'm if I use this thing, it's gonna get somewhat dusty, so it's to be expected. That little part right there is a bit tight. Just clip that up there. And that should be push down further. That should be sufficient. Sufficient. Get all this crap on my pants. This is a stupid idea, but whatever. I got the power truck cleaned out. So I guess now. Oh, that's smooth. Onto this thing. <laughs> Some reason putting it on the low setting made this thing impossible.